Puppy. We have Puppy and Dendi of uh, Navi joining us now. How are you feeling going into the grand final? Feel very excited. Uh, this is an amazing moment because I've been here for the third time already. And yeah, it's pretty good. Good. You've been watching Alliance. They've only lost one game this entire tournament. Does that affect your mental state, your mental awareness going into this, or are you just more focused on, on your game? Uh, we know some, we have some strategies to use against them. Yeah, they're they're very fucking good, and uh, I do want to like play against them once more, and this is pretty much what's going to happen. So, you know, they're the best team in the world right now. Good. <laughs> um, I am never going to engage Dendi in a staring contest in my life. Uh, he, he, you can do it. Really? Oh, I don't think so. I'm watching this happen. Clement Ivanov, Poppy, Estonia, Tartu. Alexander Dashkevich, Kovost, Kiev, Ukraine. Kuro Zale Tachazomi, Kuroki, Berlin, Germany. Gleb Lepatnikov, Panik, Hakiv, Ukraine. Daniel Shutin, Dendi, Lviv, Ukraine. Navi's third finals and still time for fun and games it seems there with Dendi and they are a team that stay in very high spirits but also because of that they always believe that they can come back in bad situations and bounce back and really that's why they're in the grand finals they are the bounce back team of the tournament what do you guys make of them if someone new is watching Dota 2 right now and doesn't know who Navi is how would you describe them going into the grand finals I mean, as you were saying, they're the most tenacious team and they're so experienced that they know that if they just have fun with the game, they're still going to win the game. And that's what we saw last year. They had a terrible group stage run. Then they came into the tournament. They were like, how do we counter Naga Siren? They picked up the Juggernaut and started doing, m working wonders with that lineup. This tournament, we see them picking Putch and winning important games with it, very important games. They've picked some <laughs> very out-of-the-box lineups and they just seem to enjoy the game much more than some of these disciplined teams do. They certainly don't like discipline, and I think they're really good at just like, they lose the first game of the series quite often, but they're really good at just like resetting and just focusing on the game, not getting emotionally disturbed and letting their morale get affected. Bruno, uh, sorry, Bruno, Navi in a nutshell. Heart. I think that's the only word. These guys play with heart. They do not play with their brains. All right. Well, let's introduce their opponents then, and we'll see what they'll be playing with. It's, it's alliance to the grand finals. We have Ake and Loda with Alliance joining us now. How are you guys feeling going into the Grand Final? It uh, feels great to be uh, in the Grand Final, to be able to play this. Uh, it's like we couldn't dream of this, uh, so it feels great. And you guys have played together for so long, so how does that feel coming into this as friends even? Yeah, it feels uh, very awesome. We, uh, it's always good to have Ake at your side. It makes me feel uh, comfortable and uh, no pressure and everything like that, so it feels really great. I'm assuming you've been watching all of the matches. What did you think of, of Navi's comeback in that last one? Uh, <laughs> like, it's it was a pretty sad uh, turn for Orange, you're but right, at the right. same time, I was so impressed by Orange's plays like throughout the whole week. They job. lost the first round in the uh, winner bracket, and then they to come all the way that they did, I think they should be so, so proud of uh, what they have done. Yeah, all the teams have been so fun to watch. Good luck to both of you, and you have taught me. I know we're not sending it back to James, but this is what I would say in Swedish if I were. Tillbaka till det, James, right? That's very good, Sure. Henrik Amberg, Admiral Bulldog, Trollhättan, Sweden. Joachim Akterhall, Aki, Gothenburg, Sweden. Jerry Lundqvist, EGM, Sweden, Westeros. Jonathan Berg, Loda, Gothenburg, Sweden. Gustav Magnussen, S4, Stockholm, Sweden. So there we have it, Alliance, the team that have performed, impressed, and still the team to beat going into the grand finals. Admiral Bulldog, S4, Ake, EGM, and Loda. Not a weak link, not a weak play, not a weak strategy. They haven't really shown weakness at all over the tournament, and they can take this, this is theirs to win. This is a big storyline for the boys from Sweden and it's Na'Vi again that are gonna have to try and stop him. So it looks like we're gonna be ready to go into the game, guys. So I'm gonna have to ask you, who's gonna take map one and why? Who's gonna come out, who's gonna come out strong straight from the get-go? I think Na'Vi's gonna come out guns blazing and actually take game one from Alliance. They might, uh, 
they're too locked down in their playstyle right now. So and Navi knows how they play, so they're gonna come out and maybe take game one and and surprise Alliance, and then Alliance is gonna gain their compo composure for the following games. I think it's gonna be Alliance. Navi they lost two games with West. They gave uh, they gave EGM Nagasaren twice. They they it just doesn't seem like their draft is really strong. Maybe as the series progresses, they'll be able to adapt more to how Alliance plays. But they haven't faced them enough, I don't think, to take the first game out strong. I have one fan from each team trying to bribe me with swag so that I would say either Navi or Alliance. So I'm going to take both at the same time. So I have from the Alliance guy this, from the Navi guy this. This looks really weird. And I'm going to go with both. Just setting trends. All right, Bruno. Um, we're going to have to get you off camera for multiple reasons to the quality of the show. But either way, it's about to get good because this is going to be the grand finals, guys. It's going to be map one against Alliance and Na'Vi. Losing my words. Bruno, please put your hat back on. It's all good. So over to LD and Lumi. Take it away for the grand finals. Fighting to become the first two-time champion, 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the grand finals of the International Three! Navi versus the Alliance. The Alliance yet to drop in a set in the entire main event, undefeated through the group stage, but Navi returning for the third time, looking for their second championship. This is truly a David versus Goliath situation, and when you say that Navi is the David, nobody would believe that they are the three times returning to the Grand Finals, but they, I'm not sure who they're gonna take it. Alliance looked in, just undefeatable in that last match against Navi, took them down 2-0, did it in style. Navi though, they battled back, they got knocked down to the loser's bracket, and where there was a will, there was a way. Unbelievable performance against Orange, and here they are, they've got another crack at it. It'll be a straight best of five, no advantage. If anyone can find a way to beat the Alliance, it probably is Puppy. It's Puppy. You have, Puppy's been playing some crazy strat. We see what they did in TI2. The Naga Siren, the Enigma, the Dark Star combo, that was it. Nobody broke that strat. Na'Vi was the first team to do it. They rose to the Grand Final because of it. And now, within the Grand Final, they need to do something special. Puppy needs to find a way because the Alliance are the heavy favorites right now. Yeah, I mean, arguably the most creative and innovative captain in the history of Dota 2. He's come up with so many strategies, and we've seen everything from Na'Vi at times in the past. This tournament, they have not... Uh, Puppies actually said they haven't shown their hand. He said they've been hiding strats, so we're going to have to find out if those hidden strats are going to work. Because the Alliance, it's been mostly the same strat every single game. Somewhat times different heroes, they've shown versatility in picks, but if it ain't broken, Lumi, why fix it? Same strat, but can you beat it? You know it's coming. The, the scary thing is Alliance, like you said, is playing standard, and if they drop a game or maybe two games, let, they're bringing out their strats. Yeah, let's not forget, this is the team that did the level one Roche. Prophet suicides the Roche, you bait the enemy team in, then you wipe them. They did the fake Roche where they pick her, so they pick Wisp, they wrap around, they smoke gank you from behind. I mean, if anyone can be creative here, it is going to be the Alliance. And Navi likes that Radiant side in general. They've normally been going for it, so if they do get it again, well, then the Alliance maybe pulls something out of the hat. Very likely, we could see that this entire series, we're going to have... Uh, Navi's going to play the entire uh, Radiant side, and we're going to see Dyer being handled by uh, Alliance. But I really think that, you know, you talked about the, the, the Roshan strategy. I think that's going to be huge. There's, don't forget the level 1 TP Roshan from, you know, from Alliance. 
Yeah, there's so many options, and I think one of the most interesting things about this matchup is the way the last series unfolded, where you saw Alliance not banning Wisp when Navi had yes. first pick. They gave away Wisp, and then they took it down twice. So if Navi have first pick again, they have a tough choice, right? Because if you're not going to pick Wisp with the first pick, generally what we've seen is you ban it out. Uh, and that's how Alliance has taken advantage of a lot of the Chinese teams who don't run Wisp particularly well. So if you don't take it with the first pick, then Alliance can get Wisp and another hero with the second pick. So Na'Vi, they have to be a little bit worried about that. Could factor into their mentality coming into this game. For those of you guys that are just tuning to the Grand Finals and wondering what is Wisp, why are we talking so much about the Wisp? Wisp is often considered as the most broken hero in the current Dota game. She makes it, she changes the game. She yes. changes the complexion of the game. It's like in, in uh, professional American football, if you have a Randy Moss, a player who is a threat to score a touchdown from 100 yards out on any given play, you have to play a fundamentally different style of Dota. So whether Wisp is banned or not, whether Navi picks it or not, just the way that last series went, has to have an effect on how Na'Vi chooses to draft. If it's not strategy, it's definitely confidence. You're giving away the best hero in Dota. You beat them cleanly in a 2-0 sweep. I'm afraid for Na'Vi. Game one, we're loading in now. Are you ready, Lumi? I am, although please refrain from the football jokes because I, I'm, I'm not following you there. I ain't joking with you. We're straight right. up here. All right, let's go. We All right. Jumping to the draft Alliance here. Navi is, is going to get the Radiant side. Alliance on the dire. Of course, I am Luminous and joined by my main man, LD. Are you ready? I am. It's game one of a best of five. Winner takes home $1.4 million. The loser, just a little over 600,000. The bands will now come out. So far, Navi removing the Chen. Puppy definitely plays a good one, but Ake has really been on the ball. They'll ban out the Chen. The Alliance removes the Havos Lifestealer. Still Wisp in the pool, still Batrider in the pool, and let's not forget, Alliance is on the dire side. So if they want to do some either level one row strats or just make Navi we think they are, they definitely have that option. Well, we'll definitely see level one Roshan if we see some kind of awesome weird hero like Ursa, but we'll table that discussion for a bit and focus a little bit about the bands here. Do you give away a Batrider? Do you give away what's Do you leave both of those heroes in the pool? No, Alliance says, sure, you know, you have to pick. We're, we're going to leave some OP heroes here. Yeah, they're basically saying it, you're, it's your choice. Let's see what Puppy wants to do, and we're going to react to it. They have the comfort of being able to react. And now, well, it will be yeah. first, first pick Alliance, Alliance here. Let's see, what are they going to go for uh, with that first pick? I mean, this is a bold move for both they're, Alliance and Navi. They're saying, you know what, let's leave the broken heroes in the pool, and we'll play full out Dota. And the tables have turned. It's Navi's turn to give away the Wisp, and they're going to see if they can defeat it. They now go for a Batrider and a Visage. Now, we have seen Visage so dominant in the laning stage. Wisp, if she gets to level 6, the game changes. But Visage is one of those heroes that can just win the game before anyone gets to level 6. And now the Alliance will pick up the Bulldog Prophet. So they had their choice. They don't go for the Lone Druid. They take the Prophet instead. Now, the difference between Lone Druid versus the Prophet here, both of Amro Bulldog's really good heroes, that Nature's Prophet will gank alongside with the Wisp. We know that Navi would like to defend the heroes, they like to defend their towers, and when you have a big clash, that a chaotic fight going on somewhere on the map, Five Prophet is the best hero to join that fight with his spells, with his ultimate, of course, with his right click. So Navi I really like this pickup over the Lone Druid, who is a little bit less mobile as a hero. I gotta say, I'm having slight flashbacks to the International too, because right now, Dendi and Havos are grinning their heads off. It reminds you of Light of Heaven in that epic game where they defeated the combo, the Naga, Tidehunter, as well as Darkseer. They've got that kind of grit on their faces now, so what's up their sleeve? We're going to find out soon. Now the band's coming forth. Navi removing out Juggernaut, and then on the Alliance's side, a Weaver. What are they going to ban next? I have no idea, because trying to predict these two masters of drafter, S4 on one side and Puppy on the other, is going to be extremely hard. So far, all of these bands looks targeted and standard. And of course, Weaver targeting of Havos, one of his best heroes. And I think Puppy is planning something. Yeah, he's, he's at least trying to make us think he's planning something. Let's see if he actually is. It's always the mind games with him. As for S4, you've started with a Prophet as well as a Wisp. Now they're going to need some heroes that can fight. They don't, have their, uh, they don't have the S4 hero yet for the solo mid roll. We don't know what load is going to play as a carry. What might they run in combination with this Wisp? Navi ban out Juggernaut. There is uh, still a Gyrocopter. We've seen that a decent amount from 
Alliance, and it's a pretty good early to mid game fighting hero in combination with a Wisp. But what do you think, Lumi? Chaos Knight, Tiny, these are your go tos. What are Alliance going to combo up with it? I think their favorite go to hero for Alliance, at least, is going to be the Phantom Assassin. We saw that in the G1 LAN final. You park your, your PA, no, you park your Wisp in a safe lane. In fact, you can even go offensive with your Nature's Prophet and a Jungle Enchantress. Backstab gangs all day. So I'm predicting a Phantom Assassin, no, I'm predicting an Enchantress. But we'll see exactly what Lions thinks. I, I like this ban a lot from Na'Vi, because they remove Keeper of the Light, and Ake, as magnificent as his jungle play is, I think his Keeper of the Light just might be scarier this tournament, especially because of the style they've been favoring, which is split push, slowly and steadily accruing an advantage, distributing the resources on the map more favorably for themselves, and once they reach critical mass, then they go from taking a few pickoffs to really forcing the fights. Keeper of the Light, the best hero to kind of adapt. If you're ahead, he prevents your opponents from getting back in the game by pushing, and if you're behind, well, he hangs on while Loda farms up. I like the fact that you brought up support heroes, because so far we have not seen the Naga Siren, who Nav Navi has given away two games in a row to Alliance, because you don't have a very, very... Uh-oh. What is... What's, something's, something's fishy here, Lumi. Well, let's table that for a bit, and maybe it'll make sense in a bit, but... Yeah, the Venomancer has been snapped up, and the question is going to be, how does the Alliance look to respond? Does this phase them at all? Because we have seen, I think it has been Navi in the past, who've taken Venom early, mm -hmm. and sometimes it just doesn't work at all. Yeah, it's a hero that doesn't have innate stun. He sure has damage over time, but it's very, very slow. So it gives you a great slow early on, but mid-game, and especially late game, this hero Five does absolutely seconds. next to nothing. It does very little compared to the other options in the pool. Like, for example, if they wanted a Keeper of the Light later on, he's very useful useful, in some ways even gets better. Venomancer, we have seen Hobos play this as a farmer. I, I don't know if it's something we'd see, in, we'd see this game. We'd probably expect it to be either Kuroki or Puppies Hero, but now Alliance, a third pick Veno could throw you off. So yes. how does S4 respond? Well, we're going to see a Gyrocopter so far here. Just a very standard and stable hero. Ventral Spirit immediately snapped up here. Look at the aggression from Na'Vi. I just want to point out that we do not see a traditional carry hero on Na'Vi's side just yet. Ventral Spirit may be that carry hero. Venomancer may be that carry hero. Na'Vi, they, they've done this in the past. They farmed Venge in the past. They farmed Veno in the past. But I think Alliance has something up their sleeve. I think we might see something like a Spirit Breaker. They, well, it's just my guess, but we'll see if they're gonna, no, it's, no, never mind. Take that back. Hold that thought. Hold it's that gonna thought. be yeah. an Ake Enchantress. They expect a lot of aggression from Na'Vi. When you see Venomancer, Visage, and Venge, these are three of the strongest level one supports in the game. And one of them will be farming. So, a lot of burst damage, the potential to go aggressive trying and kill anyone. Even a Gyrocopter, if he gets Gale, and the follow-up is there for the Magic Missile, he is going to die. Alliance, though, Ake, I think he is, in the world, the best jungler to counter aggressive tri-lanes. Uh, we've seen Extinct, Puppy, fantastic gankers, fantastic at reacting, but Ake is really good at relieving the pressure on the aggressive tri-lane. So let's see if he can pull it off here. We expect Lions to go defensive tri-lane, but the book is out now. Uh, this is where, like you said, they don't have a carry on Navi, at least not a traditional one, but they do have some good Midas armor from Venge. Are we looking at a Dendi Shadow Feed? That could be it. Shadow Fiend, you, so far you don't really have a disadvantage matchup, but at the same time you're dealing with global TP, so you have to get the BKB as soon as possible. Then the way that he plays the Shadow Fiend, he doesn't oh, go BKB. They, they want I someone mid, yeah. Yeah. and they don't want Dendi to lose his lane, so they ban out the OD. Arguably the strongest 1v1 mid in the game, definitely in the top five there. This does pave the way for a Shadow Fiend, but Alliance have not tipped their hand either, and they're going to get a chance to counterpick if they want whatever Dendi's snapping up. So S4 might be able to match him blow for blow. There is a Queen of Pain in the pool. Uh, looking at the other S4 heroes, does anything else jump out to you? No, Queen of Pain gets banned out as well, so S4 is also preparing for a very, very crazy pick for himself. He doesn't want to get countered, in a sense, by Navi snapping up that yeah, Are we going to see the return of the S4 Mag this game? Because that core is so strong if you get through the lanes. Magnus, Prophet, Gyro, on the dire side, with the ability that the Alliance has to just get their jungle ultra stacked. It's a bounty hunter for Navi! There is no clear carry on this team, and it's just all offense. They want to face rush the Alliance. I mean, question marks are up in the air right now. Are we going to see a Ventral Spirit carry? Are we going to see a Venomancer carry? Traditionally, these two aren't really good at carry. You need a ton of items. You need a ton of farm. Is it a farming visage? I mean, to be honest, any three of these heroes could get the farm in that lane. 
They can, but what we can expect out of this is a Batrider solo mid, correct? It's probably a Batrider solo mid, most likely the Funic Bounty Hunter to the safe lane. Navi, aggressive tri lane is coming. How will S4 respond? Still or it could be just a center defensive tri lane. I don't know. Like, this Navi lineup is just so strange. We have never seen anything like it. It, it. I feel like they have to go aggressive here. You're giving up. If you don't go aggressive, we've seen what the Alliance do. Because not only are they forming a Wisp and getting a level 6, they'll stack the jungle for Loda on his gyrocopter. They will even allow Bulldog to pull some camps to secure a really fast Midas. And it's a clockwork for S4. The draft is now complete. And it's going to be a Havulse Ventral Spirit as he selects a hero, unless we're going to see any swaps. Game one, the Alliance versus Na'Vi, two titans from Europe. These guys, they've only met before on land once. And the last time they met, Alliance took care of business. They took down Na'Vi 2-0. Will Puppy, will Dendi, will the rest of this Na'Vi squad, Kuroki, Havulse, Funic, will they find a way? It's been a miraculous run for them. The Fountain Hooks, we've seen as well in their last match against Orange, a bit of fate going their way. Can things continue to roll for them? Things continue, ha they have to continue to roll because they're not here just to say, you know what, let's go back to the Grand Finals for 60, 600K. They, they have tasted first place. And once you get a taste of it, there is no going back. Yes. Nothing else will do. Well, the draft now complete. It's time to get into it. Game one of the International Three Grand Finals is now underway. $1.4 million and change to the winner. Over $600,000 to the loser. On the side of the Alliance, yet to drop a set, we have S4, the captain on the clockwork. Loda, your gyrocopter. EGM, the EO, will have a very quick pause, I hope. Ake on the Enchantress. And in the base, it'll be Bulldog, your nature's prophet. And on the radiant side, Team Navi, Kuroki the Visage, Havost, the vengeful spirit, looking like we might see a farming venge. Dendi on the solo mid bat rider, Puppy, the captain, on the Venomancer. And that leaves Funic as your safe lane bounty hunter. The pause is going down now. Here we go. Back into game one. What are you expecting, Lumi? I expect a lot of kills coming out on this tri lane. This tri lane up top is going to decide much of the early game. Hold that thought. We'll have another pause here. So, I mean, we look at Navi's lineup right now. They have track gold. They have supports that really get out of control if they have a good start, right? You have Soul Assumption. You have Familiars if you hit a fast level 6. Venomancer, if he's ahead, can just run anyone down. If Navi gets ahead, it will be very hard for the Alliance to hold on to territory. It will be very hard to get their Wisp level 6, but if it goes the other way. If Alliance get a good start, they have the clearly superior late game. Clearly superior mid game as well, because when you see Alliance and they pick up BKB on Gyrocopter, what is the Vengeful Spirit going to do? What is the Visage going to do? There's really lacking physical damage. Now with that said, Vengeful Spirit is going to give you a physical damage increased aura. She's going to give you minus armor, so there is some weapons, but it's just, it, I don't think that's enough. It's not, they have some access into late game. Bounty Hunter is a pretty decent semi-carry Venge, a decent semi-carry, but you look at the Alliance, they have a Prophet, one of the strongest heroes in the late game, not in combat directly, but for his ability to farm and split push. They have a great global lineup as well. And Na'Vi, uh, heroes that don't really flash farm, that's the other thing to keep your mind on. Batrider is a great farmer in the jungle, but Venge, Venomancer, Visage do not farm all that quickly. Bounty Hunter doesn't either, unless he decides to go for a Battle Fury, which we don't expect at all. So if Navi fall behind, their ability to farm, fairly limited. Alliance talking things over, they've got a moment here. Uh, they seem very calm. Well, it looks like Batrider has reconnect. I'm surprised that there is pauses going on. We do have Merlini outside. Just waiting in the wings. Yeah, I think Merlini's, he's had a hard week, buddy. He's he taking a nap right now. Put the police cap off and he's lying down for a snooze. I don't think any other player in the world right now is taking the cap off because this is the grand final of one of the huge, this is the biggest prize The bowl, biggest esports e tournament bowl. ever. How do, you, how do you sleep during this game? You don't. Yeah, you you try don't. to, we're going to wake you up. So game one, soon to fall underway. Uh, so we talked a lot about Navi's draft and we don't have it on pause yet. So if you look at Alliance, I think for them, all they have to do is withstand the storm early on. Be prepared for ganks, get your wards right, don't get caught at level one, hang on until Bulldog starts to kick in, gets his level six, he can bail out the tri lane. Uh, of course, once, once you have S4 getting level six, has access to hook. If Navi dives that tier one top, 
and already there's a Prophet with his ult coming in, the clockwork rotates. Navi could instantly lose one fight, and on that very one fight, just lose this game. I completely agree. Although with that said, Vengeful Spirit as well as your Soul Assumption Visage, they have a so much burst power that you can get that one kill and get back out. So that I think Navi's gonna use the speed of their killing to their advantage. Let's see, I mean, but back to your point, Clockwork as well as Prophet, once they make the TP in, that's gonna be over. Yeah, it's gonna be really hard. The only team to take a game off of the Alliance this entire tournament was Team DK. Mm -hmm. And they did it a completely different way. They right. did it on the back of Burning going out of control in his anti mage. They did it on the back of a really strong 4 Protect 1 mid game lineup where once anti mage gets 4 5 slotted, you go and break their base before Alliance's superior late game can kick in while you have the, basically, while you're at the zenith of your economic advantage. But. I mean, are we going to see Na'Vi win with a completely different style? This is a radically different approach. It is different. At the same time, also somewhat similar to Game 2 with, uh, during the Winter Bracket Finals when they ride, um, ran the Tie Hunter solo mid. It was a pushing shred, got, what, all six towers in 15 minutes, but they couldn't do it. So you got to hit your timing very importantly. you got to hit it right on. And this is, to me, a timing kind of base lineup. you got to make sure you knock down towers early. you got to make sure you get a ton of kills early. And you got to focus Loda. Loda was able to free farm on Alchemist on both those games, and you just don't beat a free farm Alchemist. Yeah, Alliance has, and I think that's really worth talking about, is the contrast in these two teams. And we can start with the carries, because you look at Na'Vi, Havost is fighting from, like, minute five to eight, mm -hmm. and he never stops fighting. Constantly infesting Dendi as Lifestealer, constantly diving towers as Weaver, picking up kill after kill after kill. He's a lot of pressure early on. With the Lions, they ask Loda to perform a very different role. They say, Loda, we'll shoulder the, bu the burden in the early game. We will fight early, you will farm, and then later you will carry us. So it's a very different style for Na'Vi. And I mean, Loda's going to be on a hero that doesn't even fight for minute five. Or rather, uh, Havos. He'll be on a hero that doesn't even fight for minute five. His hero is going to fight for minute one. Yes. I mean, the big difference in this game, though, also for Loda is that he can fight at minute fights because he has a whip. So dr look towards that mid game where a chaotic fight breaks out on the other side of the map, and Loda is going to join. And with that said, he means he could farm, he could fight whenever he wants, and that's the power of Wisp. And of course, I just have to remind everybody, Navi gave it away. Yeah. It's, I mean, maybe it's, again, they, they knew what they were doing, just mm. like the Alliance knew what they were doing. Now, they knew what they were doing, and for the Alliance, it worked. Navi know what they were doing, but will it work? That's the difference here, and that's going to be the question. Uh, Ake does have an early smoke here, so don't be surprised if we see him maybe even go for an early gank on that lane if he gets the right creeps. Enchantress, I think in this situation, actually is better than Chen, because you can have two creeps, you know all you have to do is shut down Navi's tri lane, and you pretty much win the game. And if he gets the two right creeps, he shows up at the right moment. Enchantress is, she's not one hero, right? She's like two or three with those creeps, so. Yeah, you could actually get like three, three creeps in the beginning. I think for Alliance, my, my hero to keep an eye on is actually going to be Ake. If Ake is a good laning stage, if he sets up a kill or two, Alliance could just run away with game one. But let's remember, it is game one of a best of five, so Navi can experiment here, and if it doesn't work, they can try something different in game two. I like how you're just talking about strat, and you're waiting for me to jump in. And you're just and leave, I'm like, leave me hanging. you got this. This is standard. Because right now, we have a long pause. Can we just toss the strategy out the window for a bit? Because we've been talking about strategy for like the past five, let's, ten minutes. Let's, let's toss it I out. want to know who in the crowd is cheering for Navi, and who is the crowd cheering for Lions. So, let's Navi! Is that okay? I was, like, I was lukewarm. Uh, on the other side, of course, we have the Alliance. I think Alliance is... Uh, it was pretty close. Yeah. I think they're anxious for the game to start. Me too. I'm a little anxious. It, that we're only giving away $2 million in change from this one best of five. No big deal. It's just... This is, it's the biggest Dota games that have ever been played. This is somewhat nostalgic, like going back to your old Dota 1 tournaments and there was nothing but disconnects. There was nothing but like wait times. All that training, Lumi, it's prepared you for this moment. Yeah, and you know, is it, is it working well? Is the training going well? I don't know. I don't know. We're okay. still paused here. Uh, both teams, I imagine, getting a little antsy. They want to get game one underway. So we actually haven't done our predictions, Lumi. We I think it's, We can put ourselves on the record here and then be forever flamed and shamed if we're wrong. Predictions. We're actually going to unpause, so real quick. 3-2 Navi. 3-2 Navi. Oh, man, a bold prediction from Lumi. I'm going to go with the safe and stable bet here. I'm going to say Alliance take it 3-1. And on that note, we're back underway. Game one, Alliance versus Navi. Here we go. 
Very, very good defensive warding here coming out all oh, both camps. But of course, Wisp got the first ward down, so look towards this one being immediately dewarded, which allows Alliance to actually set up some gangster mid lane. There you go. Bye bye, ward. You were on the stage for like five seconds. It was a short and not so sweet life. And that's actually a big deal. Not having that ward for Navi when you're running the aggressive tri lane against an enchantress means. If Ake decides to gank without a smoke, they're not going to see it coming. Now, remember that in the old versions of Dota, uh, or even in the previous patch, you could buy two sets of wards at level one. Now you only get one set of observer wards before the creep spawn. So Puppy could just deward this if he wants to do so. Choosing not to do it yet has a, another ward over here on this side. That is going to be important, but at the same time means you do not have sight in the jungle. And not having sight in the jungle against an Enchantress is almost suicidal. That first deward meant so much for Alliance. All right. so. Alliance is actually doing something very different here. Looks like they want to dodge that aggressive tri lane. They're going to send their gyrocopter as well as Wisp to the bottom lane. And early on, that puts Funic in a 1v2 against a, a dual lane that, if they have sentries, could definitely kill him. And they've got one on EGM. He's got to be careful here. He does not have boots. Normally, Funic has boots, but it looks like he was expecting the Prophet versus Bounty Hunter matchup. And if you have that matchup, you really want the Poor Man Shield. Poor Man Shield is not going to help you too much against Wisp and Gyrocopter. Well, it's going to help a little bit with the harass coming out from Wisp, but for the most part, he's coming right in. There is a Sentry War on the ground. If he gets Tether Stun Tether? here, no. ooh, nothing just yet. Funic coming in, sapping a little bit of experience. Obviously, we expect this lane to go towards Loda and as well as EGM. 2v1 against a melee hero. It should be fairly easy. What about mid here? S4 on his Clockwork against one of those most dominant mid hero, Dendi's Bat. Yeah, Clockwork's pretty good against Bat because you're, you have the cogs if he ever really wants to go on you. If he dives you at your tower, sure, there's Firefly, but you have the Battery Assault. And getting those mini stuns off, maybe you disrupt him for a moment. I think it's an okay match for S4. He's going to lose the lane, but his goal is just to get level 6, hang on, and angle for mid-game dominance. If Bulldog, uh, if Bulldog's not dying here in the top lane, I think, I think that's pretty much what they're looking for. Havost does, or rather Funic, has to be very careful bottom. So early on, looking at this tri lane Lumi, do you think we're going to see any unusual skill builds from Na'Vi? Because these are generally support heroes, all three that they're running here. Or is it possible they get aggressive uh, well, and just play sort of your standard kill early on support style builds? Already right from get-go here, if you look at Puppy's skill build, he has selected his passive Poison Sting. Generally, you always go Venomous Scale as it is one of those uh, strongest early game spell. And I think the reason that he has gone for Venom, uh, for Poison Sting, as we do see a gank on the Centaur, <laughs> nice stop here. Any gonna be killed? Deny here? Looking for Ake, and <laughs> they are gonna get denied. Beautiful No deny. early game EXP and go for you guys. And the reason you go for Poison Sting is it actually helps you for a push. It gives you like five extra damage-ish. It's a, I mean, there's no other reason to really go for Poison Sting yep. early on. Basically, you can hit each creep once, and then they'll slowly tick down. Whereas right. if you go for the Gale, you're not going to spam it. Gale, very expensive in terms of mana at the early levels. We'll see Funic pick up a nice regen, and I'll head back to the bottom lane. So if you're Alliance, your goal is to not fall too far behind in the laning stage. You have the mid game to fall back on. And so far, they're not dying. We see Ake getting good levels out of the jungle. You look at Navi's tri lane, and their supports are both level 1. S4, in terms of the middle lane, sitting 11 and 1, to the 12 and 3 of Dendi. I think everything's going quite well here for the Alliance. The pressure is on Na'Vi, not on the Alliance. Exactly. When you run an offensive trial lane, you need to get things done quick and early. And of course, there is a ticking time bomb on the bot lane here, Alliance, with EGM on the Wisp. Once he hits a level 6, suddenly this game transforms to something completely different. Of course, Gyrocopter is one of those early game carry heroes that could get into these team fights. So look towards Loda as well as EGM playing very close to each other throughout this game and looking to set up kills all of them. Now. All right, Ake okay, smoked up, heading towards the middle lane. Dendi, no mana right now. The courier's about to come in. It should have his boots as well as his bottle. And this might be an opening, but he's head up to the high ground. And it looks like the moment may have passed. Rocket coming in, canceling Dendi's bottle charge. Ake will decide that's not a good gank. He'll back off, and he's going to head back into his own jungle. Does he actually want to make it go on top? Because this is not a very strong ganking combo. I, I think he's just going to sit back here. If he could get Kuroki somewhat out of position with a Centaur Stomp, he it does have a Clap Creep now as well here. S4 is really playing well in this middle lane, just constantly using the cogs, burning Dendi's mana, preventing him from being aggressive, but it's bottom lane, where they've gone in on Funnick, he's dropping pretty low, there's another rocket barrage, there's, there's still dust. a dust here, it's first blood, and it goes to the Alliance! Very, very early, oh, Loda, oh. it's gonna survive, <laughs> that oh, was man. pretty close. That tango, that salve, making the difference here, and it's what we talked about, I mean, Wisp, Gyro, 
do have the power to kill a bounty early on. Yeah, and of course, uh, I think they may might be going for a second one here. As the creep wave is pushing in, there's another dust available. That's going to be on cooldown for about 30 more seconds. So look towards Alliance making yet another play under the tower very soon. Yeah, they killed off Funnick in the bottom lane, the mid lane. They're trading evenly. The profit top lane for Bulldog has not died. They're running a jungler. The supports of Na'Vi are only level 2 to the 3 and 4 of Alliance. Alliance is already pretty damn far ahead on the better late game lineup. Yeah, so far it seems like this Na'Vi early game kind of rush strat on the top lane has not really been panning out. Of course, funnix has got to be very, very careful on the bot lane. Dust is ready to go right now, and if Funnick's not careful enough, a single Dust will be the, uh, the death of him. Keep in mind that he cannot win walk away. In fact, if he decides to win walk away, he'll be slowed down by the Dust. 10% slow on the newest patch. We're five minutes in, golden experiences even, and Funnick is getting close to level six, but now the phase boot's coming out for Loda. A very slow, a very deliberate start for both teams. There is so much on the line. You drop game one, all of a sudden, the series gets a whole lot harder for you. Na'Vi, they've gone for something very unconventional with their picks. Can they make it work? So far, we're not seeing it, but we do have to remember their ability to find kills in the mid game is outstanding. So much burst, so much lockdown. But for the time being, they need a few items and a few levels to make it happen. Yeah, very interesting adjustment of skill build. Round up on two. Oh. Round two. Wrapping around. Dendi in a bit of trouble here. There's two Hellbear Smashers, but he's going to head north. Hooked and caught out by S4, but he heads north again. Juking here, jiving there, and he's going to dodge it. Up to the tree line he goes. He's got no TP, but he's got stick charges in the south. We'll head back into the river. The Hellbears are there. Clap number one. But it looks like he should live. No. Double clap. But he's got boots. He's still got the stick charges. Should be fine. Meanwhile. Rocket's going to hit. Cancels the south. Dendi dropping oh, precariously low. But Meanwhile, on the top lane, it looks like they made a go on Bulldog. He's forced back to base, but now gets his boots and has 600 gold. He's against an aggressive trial lane. He has not died. He hasn't lost his tower. And he's not that far off of a Midas. Could have won by like the 8 to 10 minute mark. Yeah, this is one of the strangest pushing trial lane. I've ever seen. I mean, if you look at their skill build here, you have one point into the play war, so they are going to get a tower here. Ake trying to deny it with the creep. You also have Kuroki getting a point in early Gravekeeper's Cloak, expecting some kind of early game dive, but with a tier 1 tower going up down, I think we are going to see Puppy as well as Kuroki starting to make some rotation towards the mid lane. Yeah, meanwhile, the ticking time bomb you spoke about, EGM in an aggressive dual lane as a Wisp, is already one level from six. And then you have to look at Na'Vi, Havost pretty survivable with his phase boots, but Puppy, 560 HP at max with just basic boots, Kuroki, 682, and the Gravekeeper's Cloak to help keep him alive. These heroes, if they get caught by relocate, they're just dead. I mean, they are flat out not going to live through that. Yeah, it's very important to get basically four stabs or blink daggers, any kind of instant mobility items to get you away from those uh, relocates. And but in order to do that, you need to farm. And you look at their supports, they're not getting a whole lot. Exactly. They're not getting too much ganks off. They're not getting too many tower kills. And because of that, under level, under farmed, and Na'Vi struggling on this early game. When DK beat Alliance, they were doing quite well. They were, I think, winning every single lane. So Na'Vi definitely not going down that route to secure a win. Let's see how they could do it. But this is a very kind of classic Na'Vi lineup in the sense that it can snowball really hard. And that's what Na'Vi's always been about. Aggression in the first 10 to 20 minutes of the game, sometimes even in the first five. So far, the aggression yet to come. Eight minutes in, but you got to know it's only the calm before the storm. And here comes S4. Level 3 battery assault, the more aggressive killing build. He wants to find a pick. He's up in the Navi jungle, hunting, heading towards the bottom lane. There's a, a Funic, There's level a 6. There's some TPs on Navi. Oh, Funic going to be spotted out, but there's no gem here. And now the rotation coming in from Ake. He'll pick up a creep as well. They're going to rotate Puppy off the top lane. Both teams. Now Ake healing up. Funic driven back. They're not going to find any kills yet, but with the dust that should be on the Wisp, yeah, there still is a dust charge. If they try to go again, it could go south, but here they go. On to Ake. DD for S4. Ake dropping fast. He's going to fall, but S4, he's found Funnick. Now tethered. Blown up by the Ake creep. Fighting from beyond the grave. Now Kuroki sprouted. Locked in place, but here comes Big. Bad Dendi, but no. It's too much damage from Loda. Three to one. Already Na'Vi on the back foot. We just talked about Loda generally not liking to join early game fights because he wants to farm, but this game making the quick rotation, helping out his allies. Of course, EG game came first. And of course, even though there was a track kill that went the way of Na'Vi, it was like a one or two person track kill. So Alliance coming out ahead and they are staying ahead because 
they are winning every single lane right and, now. And you you look at Alliance, they don't need gold nearly as much as they need experience. And they are leading in terms of experience. Every single hero level 5 or higher, that Wisp for EGM, one creep wave most likely off of level 6. And once he hits level 6, Navi, a lineup that wants to push early, a lineup that wants to find a lot of kills. When you are ganking, you'd better be ganking the Wisp or the Prophet, and ideally both, because if not, then they're just going to counter gank the crap F out Funic, of you. Funic is uh, scouted. If this one, this, the wisp, oh, there you go. They no. know exactly where he the, is now. The orb's going to start splashing, and Funic will rotate back for the time being. EGM, he knows how close to level 6 he is. He needs that one creep, and now he's got it. So the threat of relocate, it's on the board, the Alliance. Lumi, they've weathered the storm through the laning stage. And you got to say, although to a new fan of Dota, this might look like a dead even game strategically, it's a huge advantage for the Alliance. Yeah, and of course, if you look at Na'Vi's, uh, the way they're playing right now, all four or five are hovering very close to the mid lane. They are losing out in terms of farm and experience. Meanwhile, on the other side, you have EGM and Ake in the jungle just getting some tiny bit of a go experience. You have Loda just straight up farming up top. So I think the Alliance is getting a ton more out of the map. And it's really hard to make a dive on S4 in the mid lane. He is so tanky, almost at 1200 HP with a full magic wand charge. There is no way they're going to get a kill on S4 without committing four or five onto him. Yeah, they have to blow a lot. And I think it's worth it to blow a lot if you can secure a kill. But if you go on S4, then that's where relocate comes. The Prophet ult now online for Bulldog. They, they have to dive those, those counter gankers. And even S4 is a counter ganker because all the towers are up aside from the tier one top. Navi, they need to find a gank fairly soon in the next three to five minutes, I would say, for sure. They don't have the Dendi Blink yet. It's a key item for the ganks to work. But while they sit back, Loda's rushing a BKB, and if he gets one, you look at Navi, and you talked about physical damage and their lack of it, and that hasn't changed for me. Funic just has a bottle, boots, a poor man shield. He doesn't have any damage items. Nobody really does. There's a little bit of damage coming from Havost, but... If he gets a BKB on this gyro, Navi are going to have a very hard time killing Loda. Yeah, Havos only gets a physical damage when he levels up and max both his uh, smaller spells, the Wave of Terror as well as Ventral Aura, but she's nowhere near the, the levels that she needs to be. Meanwhile, Bulldog just chilling bottom lane. Funic, though, he's going to start here with the Janata. Now applying the right clicks, but there's a Sprout on Funic. He might be in trouble. S4's rotated in. No detection yet. Here's your relocate. They really want this pesky bounty hunter, and they'll find him. The Alliance, they got poked and they bit back hard. Getting a free kill basically on the bot lane and not losing any kind of momentum anywhere else. There's no push in the mid lane. And Perhaps right, we're going to see right a kill. Mid. Here we go. Okay, They're looking in. for two. Oh, Hooked the to fly. They've caught Puppy as well. Call outs coming in. Dendy's down. Six to one. Alliance already out of control. Barreling down the middle lane. This is looking bad for Navi. We said in the early game drafting stage that if Alliance wins, just come out even. In the, in the early game phase, they will just be unstoppable during the mid game. Not only have they came out even, they've done so much more. They, they're winning by the kills, they're winning by experience, they're winning by gold. Alliance is about to take a tier 1 tower. And how do you stop this? Going to go on the S4 on the mid lane. Tower is already dead and looks with a tether stun. Oh, Swap coming back in here. Can they get a kill on S4? They're blowing everything onto him and they are going to get the kill. That was very important. A four man track kill. Funic doing his work and, well, Navi find something. Yeah, the one guy that really would have liked that extra 50 gold is Dendi, of course. He's getting closer to his Blink Dagger. He will have it soon. Navi definitely have a few more runs of aggression in them. And every time that a gank works, every time they get a couple of heroes with a track kill, they extend their lease on life in this game. They're not out of it yet, but they're the ones who have to force the fights. And if you're Alliance, you can take fights, but you don't have to. If you're Alliance, you want to be careful, though. Track Gold has a way of sneaking up on you. All of a sudden, Funic shows up with drums, with phase boots. The next few fights later, he's got a BKB. Dendi's got a four staff. Then Boots of Travel. It creeps up on you, and then all of a sudden, you're like, man, where did all those items come from? I thought we were winning this game. So for now, Alliance ahead, but they will want to play it safe. And one of the big items that will allow them to play it safe is going to be this BKB on Gyro. It's coming very, very soon. Yeah, because of that, I feel like Navi basically have about one minute or one minute, 30 seconds to make something happen on the map because once BKB is up on Gyrocopter and now because of there's a mech up on Admiral Bulldog as well, there is just nearly none of that on, on Navi to, to do anything. How do you kill Loda? And meanwhile, of course, when you're not killing him, he's killing everybody else with the, uh, with the call down and max flat cannons. Yeah, and then the other thing is, a lot of these heroes really don't do much against that BKB. You look at Visage, he has Familiar Shore, he's got a mech to help keep his own team alive, but most of his damage is the Soul Assumption in the early to mid game, and he's not going to be hitting that hard. Puppy, virtually useless against BKB heroes, unless he gets off a Gale in, in advance. Oh, they see. Yeah, they, they see go, though. Havost, easy pickings for S4. 
brought down by a hook, jams it in, and now it's seven to two. Havost, he's their one position player this game. I mean, you look at some of these other heroes, maybe they can carry the load, but he's really the only physical damage dealer, and that death, not gonna help too much. Havost going for SMY, an item that gives you a little bit of uh, something uh, in it, all it, categories. It could be an Ag Scepter, that's the other possibility. Sure. But SMY... Actually, it does look like an Ag Scepter. Yeah, if, it, if it's an Ag's, I mean, the nice thing with an Ag's Venge is that you have Nether Swap constantly available for fights. The cooldown is only 10, but... That doesn't necessarily help you if the Alliance just have the superior five man. Yeah, of course. What does Acceptor do for you when Against you... Against Loda, for example. Right. When you swap in and then you die. Because there's so much focus fire on Alliance's part. But they will try to make something happen. That swap was what gave them the kill on S4 on the mid lane. But if you look at the Alliance, when they could Roche, they will Roche. And there's just no way that Navi could stop this. The Roche Three is ages. dropping fast, but Dendi wants to contest. He's coming in with Firefly. Are we going to see an Aegis steal? Roche is low. Not dead yet. They're backing off. They're going in. He can't make up his mind. And now it's too late. Firefly's over. S4 back into the pit, covering his team. Roche to fall. It goes to the Alliance. The Aegis on the Loda. And now, a hook on a boast. He's overstayed his welcome here. Swapping in Kuroki. Kuroki says, get me out of here, man. And he can't. He'll fall. It's a headlong retreat now. Bulldog teleporting forward, creating another base of attack. Now a call down to fly. They've lasso Bulldog. He's still alive, though. He's not even dying. Three dead. No track kills for Na'Vi. And they're not gonna get any. Make it four. Navi down two to eleven, yeah, and they're gonna GG. Oh my god. GG. Sixteen minute GG, and they're gonna get that final last kill. Alliance just dominating, dominating Navi. Three time finalist, but it does not matter at all. The Alliance not even slightly phased. Navi went for a very unorthodox draft. Very little access to late game. Heavy pressure on the laning stage. And the Alliance weathered the storm, took the advantage early, and they never, they never looked back. Alliance have never looked this strong, winning a game from one of the biggest and strongest Western team out there. What can Navi do for game two? What can they pull out? That was, I don't know if I called a pocket strap, but a very unusual draft from them. So obviously, Navi, we don't expect them to do something similar again. Mm -hmm. It's not like they brought their bread and butter and then Alliance just destroyed it. They brought something unusual. It didn't work. Now we're gonna have to see what they do though, because when they gave a, when they got Wisp, they couldn't win with it. When they give it away, they lose to it. Granted, a, with an unusual draft, Wisp is gonna be an interesting problem for them in these drafts because they really shouldn't be giving away to Alliance. At least it feels that way now. And if they're not, then they're forced to waste a ban on it. And you open up Bulldogs hero pool, you open up EGM's hero pool, Ake's, everybody on this team, they're in a bind. Navi is losing with the standard game. Has Wisps, can't win. Navi is losing on non-standard games. Picking offensive trialing Venge, not working out. I'm not sure what they could do, but hopefully Puppy's got something in mind because this series could be quite over quite quickly. And, I mean, we're going to have to see. Game two's coming up. Alliance leading 1-0 in a best of five. There's $2 million in change at stake. My goodness. They can taste it, man. They have come so far. And I, I mean, you look at this team, they had an undefeated run at the G1 League Land Finals. They traveled to China, they came, they saw, and they conquered. And here they are, again, not on their home turf, they're in Seattle, they're mm -hmm. from Sweden, and all they're doing is winning games. They are winning games and winning it very, very convincingly. Absolutely. And it looks like, uh, I guess we're gonna be getting into game two pretty soon, so you look at the draft uh, for this game, and it was very unconventional from Navi, I think, to say the least. I'm waiting for a voice in my head to tell me. <laughs>